Do you sometimes feel like you're taking two steps forward and one step back with your training? Often having to navigate niggles and injuries, feeling burnt out, or just demotivated a lot. Or if you're anything like me, then it may even feel more like two steps forward and two steps back. From my late 20s, for about five straight years, I was struggling with chronic injuries, and the harder I tried to fix them, the worse they seemed to get. However, in the last year or so, since slightly adjusting my approach to training, I've come on leaps and bounds. My body feels the best it has in years, I'm moving pretty well, I enjoy every session, and it has taken next to no discipline. I think I may have identified a few key factors as to how I have achieved this, and hopefully, by my sharing, they could help you too. So, as you may be wondering from the title of this video, could love be the answer? Well, if you'll humor me for a brief time, allow me to share my theory as to how starting to apply more loving principles in my training may have been what turned the tide for me. Yes, that's right, I'm talking L-O-V-E as the answer to your gym and training woes, and not in some airy-fairy rainbows and unicorns way, though rainbows and unicorns and fairies are awesome, but logically and rationally understood and applied. Please know that I'm not sharing this as someone who considers myself or loving or fully understands love or holier than now. These are just some ideas that have come to me after years of frustration with my body, years that have been paralleled by lots of spiritual questioning and soul seeking alongside my gym life. I came to recognize that true spiritual principles are multidimensional by nature. And so what is true that can be applied for the soul and the spirit has corresponding principles that can be applied to the body and the physical too. Now I know that might already be sounding a bit woo woo for some, so let's just dive into it. Okay, as I'm claiming love to be the answer, by power of opposites, we could then say that a lack of love may be the root of the issue, and possibly not then, bad posture, sitting all day, evil footwear, or poor biomechanics. After all, some people may have all of these problems and not have any negative physical symptoms, and someone might have none of said problems and still be injured all the time. So before we start, to be clear, I'm not saying that the problem is a lack of love for what you're doing when you train, but possibly a lack of love being present when you are training. So, how do we know when love is not present in our training? Well, I've come up with a list of some telltale signs. Training the body isn't a fun or pleasant experience. We're always managing niggles and injuries. It's repetitive. We feel competitive and serious. It's all mind-led and there's no dialogue with the body. We don't feel grateful. It always requires discipline. We're chasing worth through looks or accomplishments. We're chasing highs and dopamines through PRs and competitions all the time. We're not listening to or feeling in our bodies. We're always tired and burnt out or overtrained. We're self-critical and self-judgmental. Well, I don't know about you, but they certainly sound very familiar to me. But let's unpack them a little further. A lot of us believe our worth comes from our body. For many of us, it's how it looks or how much it weighs. And for others, it could be what it can do for us. How fast it can run, how much it can lift, how many insert X trick here it can do, how high it can backflip from, and often it's more than one. I know I have and still battle with this one. Let me give an example as to why I believe this to be the case, especially in my life at least. My father felt the most comfortable opening up emotionally and showing me love when I achieved athletically. And I have a mother who seems to value how I look more than my feelings and what's in my heart. Because of this, I've been deeply wounded emotionally to associate looks and athletic prowess with worth. And therefore, I have chased both for much of my life, believing it to be love. When in fact, I'm starting to see now that it isn't. This has led me to a lot of abusing and not listening to my body, overtraining and self-judgment. Anyway, this type of programming causes emotional injuries, which can lead us to be and feel very serious when we train. To constantly chase highs, more plates, faster times, lose weight, gain weight, look more toned, addicted to competition. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying any of these are inherently bad in themselves, but if on a deeper level we are seeking them solely because we think people will love us more because of them, then in the long run, we will only ever end up being disappointed and stuck in these endless cycles of injury, overtraining and burnout. Or on the flip side of this, if we're not training or working on our body, our weights, our looks in some way, then we may feel a sense of guilt arise that could lead us to chastise ourselves. It's starting to make sense to me that you cannot earn love. It is a gift and your value shouldn't come from what your body can do. And if it does to somebody else, then that isn't actually love. Okay, 
Now let's talk a bit about listening to your body. When I look around the gym, I see a lot of people moving their bodies, but not many actually in and being present with their bodies. Often, in fact, going a step further and attempting to suppress and disconnect from the sensations of the body in order to demand more from it. In my opinion, this can be a dangerous and damaging thing to practice. And I think it demonstrates a lack of love for the body and a reason injuries happen and are in most cases not simply bad accidents or genetic failures, but something that someone has been working on for a long period of time. When you're training at the gym or in the park or in your home, you are using your body. So you should be listening to your body. And just like we feel our emotions with and in our soul, we feel physical sensations with and in our body when we use it. It's a tool to be honed. I understand people like the comfort of sticking to a routine or following a program where they can just show up, tell the body what to do, do it, and then go home. Fingers crossed you get the results promised by the PT, the influencer, the big guy or girl that may or may not be on steroids anyway. But this purely mind-led approach doesn't account for so many things. How you're feeling on the day, your quality of sleep the night before, your recent nutrition, your recovery from the last session, your energy levels, your emotional state, stress, etc., which all affect what it is capable of. If you want to have a healthy relationship with your body, then just like it is with another human, it should be a two-way conversation, where you listen to what it has to say about how it is feeling. And if you truly love it, you can then choose to act on the information it is telling you or not, but at least be present and hear it out. A relationship with your body takes years or even decades to develop, but it takes shared time together, listening, exploring, learning the language it speaks in. Next time you go to the gym, try to go with and be in your body rather than maybe act like an overbearing, controlling partner. Onwards then to a more positive aspect and purpose of this letter, when love is present. If you simply reverse most of the previous list, this is what you get. The gym becomes an enjoyable experience every single time. It takes little to no discipline and in fact you look forward to it. You have a more playful and explorative attitude to your body and to the equipment. You become creative with your training and you feel more intuitively led and it's always varied. There's a spirit of camaraderie with the others at the gym or the people that you train with. The physical experience of moving your body feels good every second. There's smiling and laughing, spontaneous dancing and singing. The mind and body are in harmony and there's communication happening. You don't feel the need for PRs or to chase goals all the time. Yes, truly. It can be energy building. You can get a feeling of gratitude for your body and an appreciation of its magnificence and ingenuity in design and what it's capable of. You may even feel more self-acceptance and love at a soul level rather than a superficial one. So, how does that all sound? I just want to add a note here too, that none of this means that you won't progress either. I believe you will make extremely noticeable progression just in areas that are healthier and more holistic in nature than maybe some of the markers that you're used to using. And I would still say most of the traditional markers, weight loss, feeling stronger, looking more toned, would still improve to a healthy natural point, but you wouldn't be so attached to them. The progress you will make that matters the most here will be how the body feels to use, which will soon become more valuable to you than any statistics it can accomplish. If you were to take children or dogs as an example, I would say they know how to enjoy their bodies far more compared to the average person in the gym who dedicates hours every week to their body. But in many cases, their purpose and motivation for being there at the gym has been manipulated societally through their fears and insecurities. And so their approach to training is equally misguided and off track from how I believe training and physical education should really be approached. So, what's the solution? Well, hopefully you recognised some of the points noted on that list already present in your training. These are what I see as hallmarks of love being present. Maybe good clues and things to look out for, but it doesn't in itself tell you how to achieve it. So let me share some keys that should give you something to take away. Here are five keys to training with love. Truth, humility, feeling, number four, precision, and number five, nature. Say hypothetically, I dropped you off out in the wilderness, middle of nowhere, mountains all around you and you're lost. But I gave you a map. The first thing you have to do if you want to find your way back to civilization again is to identify exactly where you are on that map. 
If you don't know where you are as a starting point, you will stay lost. And it's as good as toilet paper at that point. In the same way, if you're lying to yourself about what condition your body is in and what it is capable of, you will stay frustrated with it and keep getting injured, burnt out, not enjoying and not appreciating it. So you need to know the truth of your body and admit it to yourself. And by truth, I mean the state of it. All its tweaks and creaks, niggles, stiffness, the positions you want to avoid because of the instability you feel when you go there. Allowing yourself to really listen to these signs and feel your body is the key to knowing the truth. Once you've begun to acknowledge the truth, then you need to have the humility with how you approach it. Start from where you have just identified yourself to be on the map, not from where you were at one peak moment in your life or where you want to be, or where your training partner is, or the person you look up to on Instagram is. From here, feeling is the way out of it. In the beginning, it may feel like you're fumbling in the dark. You can't read the land at all. You keep going the wrong way, maybe making things worse temporarily. But through this exploration, your sensitivity will grow and you'll begin to read the land better and start to feel a more intuitive sense about what feels like the right way and what doesn't what feels good for the body and what is damaging. It's through this process that you begin to learn the language of the body. Feeling is listening. In the beginning, this may make you slow down to identify instabilities and work through them gently and lovingly using regressions and the grace of stability and balance training, which is how I came up with my Swiss ball course, Stable. As you become more sensitive to feeling in the body, you will become more precise with the internal sensations you're triggering the movements you put it through and how you use it. Through developing muscle control and cueing muscles in order to move the body as opposed to just aimlessly moving the body in the old patterned ways. Copy and paste programs with sets and reps have a tendency to put us in our heads and we can imitate what someone is doing on a YouTube video but we are never able to really know what they're feeling and what activation is actually happening within their body. That is why principle focused training, though it may be harder to follow in the beginning, can do so much more for you in the long run than set programs, as they encourage self-responsibility. They teach you how to fish and fix yourself rather than having to be fished for. The feather barrier training I teach in my online school is all about applying these principles and learning to feel. The feather barrier is a mechanism in the body that is activated at just the right positional intensity often far less loaded than we are used to applying. It is at the load point just before you feel the body wants to tighten up to protect itself and its joints, and usually is accompanied by some tremoring in the muscle if identified accurately. Once you become sensitive to what it feels like and learn to work with it, you start to lay some really solid foundations on which the rest of your training can build upon. This has been one of my greatest discoveries since starting to take this approach. In my eyes, it is the biggest physical key to recovering from chronic injuries and is all about becoming internally precise within the body. After some time in working and applying yourself in this way, I believe most, if not all of the physical activities you will want to do will be natural. Walking, running, jumping, spinning, hanging, climbing, intuitive stretching, squatting, crawling, being upside down, swinging, both yourself and objects, throwing, swimming, mostly shoeless as well. You will find great joy in all of these and they will develop deep-rooted, dense, evenly balanced strength within the body with the ligaments, tendons and fascia included, not just the muscles. They will develop balance, coordination, agility, skills and patterns of movement that cross over between them all. You'll also develop a relationship with your body and with nature as a playground, aka God's original gym. Now I've far from got this all figured out and I'm not saying I've solved every issue in my body and I'm now in perfect health. And the more I attempt to use humility and truth as light posts, the more work I see I have to do. But I do know the ground that I've covered and what hasn't worked in the past and what is working for me now. Also, there is so much more to be said for the unhealed childhood emotions that I alluded to earlier, which are all surrounding a love or a lack of love at the time they happened. And I believe these are the root cause of most physical ailments. But as a subject in itself, it would deserve its own essay or 10. But if you'd like to hear more on that subject, then I just encourage you to go and check out Divine Truth and I'll link a video down below who speak on that in a lot more depth and have inspired much of the understanding I have shared with you today. Let me just leave you with this one final point in closing. Motivation matters. As children, 
we were probably all a little more connected to our bodies and had pure motivations to move and to play by following our joy and being inspired by love and passion rather than chasing love or running from our fears and emotional pains. If we can all just be a little more honest about our motivations for training, be truthful about where we are currently at physically and learn to identify when love is and isn't present during our sessions, I believe we'll begin to feel greater health and freedom of physical expression and movement from there and rediscovering what we all already once knew how to do so effortlessly. So much of my physical training up until this point has been about trying to prove something either to myself or to others and I don't think I'm the only one. Digging into it, in most cases, the motivation to try to prove ourselves stems from an insecurity and a fear of not being enough as we are already. The pervasiveness of this fear as motivation for us to train rather than wanting to understand our bodies, following our enjoyment and desiring a deeper and more loving relationship with our body may be playing a big role in the current decline of physical health and high levels of chronic issues that we're seeing plaguing society today. The more I focus on allowing love to be present when I train, the more my body opens up to me and the more joy and appreciation I feel to inhabit one. The human body truly is a gift, but like everything else in God's kingdom, love is the key that unlocks it. Thank you for listening. Well, if you watched it this far, I hope you got something from that. It was a letter I just wrote for my new blog. If you liked it and want to be notified when I've written a new one, sign up to my newsletter, link below. Or if you want to discuss or be guided through how to apply this type of approach further, consider joining my online school, which I'll also link below too. Godspeed, everyone.